What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Reverend C, coming to you from outer space, as usual, with another episode of Reverend C's Kitchen, where we are cooking up everything except spirits. As usual, I ask that you click like, comment, subscribe down below. If you are in Florida's Treasure Coast or in the Palm Beaches and you are in need of an ordained minister for weddings, baptisms, or a certified Christian counselor where you need to talk to someone, you can reach me on this channel below. Now, we're still in the summer. You're still looking for quick and easy recipes, either for the kiddos or for the family, or you're just in a time crunch. This is one that I cooked up, my own creation, uh, just threw something together one day. This is chicken and mushrooms. And uh, I'm gonna show you how I do it. It's fairly simple. The hardest part, as always, is the part where you hurry up and wait. So let's check it out. All right, so here's another quick cook. This one's pretty simple, actually. I got two pounds of chicken here and this guy. Now what this guy is, this Badia Complete Seasoning, and again, I'm not sponsored by Badia, but hey Badia, if you want to, reach out to me. Uh, it's pretty much for those of you who don't know, it's kind of their version of Mrs. Dash. So if you're using Mrs. Dash, it's all good. You can use it. Um, all I'm gonna do is basically season like so. All right. And just now let that sit for a few minutes before smacking it down a little bit to kind of get it up in there and then flip it over and rinse and repeat on the other side. Uh, so right now, you know, obviously with the magic of video. Okay, it's been the allotted time. So we go ahead and we take our chicken breasts. Let's flip them over. Before doing so, I did say you're gonna pat them down. Oop, the tripod there falling over, huh? Uh, so let's go ahead and pat it down. Okay, now we flip them over. Excuse me for that, a little faux pas. This chicken's still a little frozen, it's okay. Throw out your pad. Rinse your hand off. Don't wash, rinse. Uh, for this, this particular little part of it, Go ahead and just rinse it off, okay? Because uh, all you're gonna, just rinse yes. it off so you don't get goop. Yeah. So you're gonna go ahead and just repeat the process. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and just sprinkle it with uh, a little bit of the body or the Mrs. Dash or whatever you wanna use. Um, the reason I use this one is simply because it's cheaper, okay? And it stores nicer in the um, inside of the cabinet. Uh, the this one also uh, you can get this particular version with adobo seasoning already in it if you want to do that uh, If I wanted to do that, I would just break it out and use that but why I don't want to in this case uh, so at this point we uh, now we go wash our hands and we uh, you know with the magic of video Okay, so now we're back uh, and you know, we've waited the allotted time. Wipe down the glass cleaner, I mean, the glass here. Um, we're gonna smack our chicken. I change camera angles so that this way we don't have to worry about the tripod falling over. We're gonna take our chicken. Now, this happens to be two pounds, okay? There is no particular ration as far as any type of seasoning for the chicken. Now I myself um, can cut with my left, so I don't have to really, you know, go rinse off. But you probably have to, and you should, because uh, you don't want to get a disgusting little bacteria called Campylobacter, which is what happens when you mess around with chicken. You can take your chickens here and just throw them in there. Okay, nice part about being ambidextrous, I guess. Uh, so now you can cut these whichever way you'd like. 
uh, you might want to just cut them right down the middle. You might just want to give them a little slash here so you can cook them as, um, as, as entire breasts. Uh, because currently I'm on a bit of a, a restricted diet and I, I like to weigh my food, I need to weigh my food. I'll cut them into little cubes, it just makes it a lot easier. Plus it also ensures we may have some leftovers for tomorrow. Um, so I'm gonna use cubes. I'm gonna use cubes. And you could just simply go ahead and... Just cut them this way. Uh, the nice part about when they're frozen is it does make it a lot easier to cut. Okay. And this is just my my preference for now. Uh, yeah, there would be some times um, if I'm going to be, you know, having company over or whatever, we could just go ahead simply and cut them like you would cut, you know, just the breasts for everybody. Um, but again, it might be too much meat for everyone. Uh, this is two pounds of chicken, chicken breast. Uh, so we can only assume they are pretty evenly sized. Now you're going to divide those those two pounds by three. So if you're dividing those 32 ounces, roughly it's a little bit over 10, uh, 10 ounces of breast. So just cut them in little cubes like so. If you want to season them again, you may. I, I choose not to. I choose uh, to err on the side of caution. Uh, with uh, the other people who may be eating. Um, I don't mind food being a little salty, but some people despise it. Uh, so, just kind of rinse and repeat the process until you cut your chicken. And, uh, you know, of course, with time lapse. Okay, now we switch to mushrooms. Uh, now I wash my mushrooms. Uh, I would recommend you do the same. Remember, these get pulled out of the ground and you shouldn't trust your local grocery store to wash them. If you're getting them from a farmer's market, you know, real shit, organic shit, and you probably know to wash them too because they're fresh. Um, me personally, I would leave them like this, okay? My family likes them a little smaller. Uh, personally, it's too much effort to sit there and slice and dice these because remember, it's all about making it quick, right? Because we want to do it quickly. Uh, the, the longest part, should in reality be the cooking. The prep work should not take you that long. And when I say the longest part being the cooking, I mean, you know, the sit there and wait, uh, which you'll do quite a bit. Kind of like waiting for it to marinate. Um, so I just kind of chop it up a little bit as if I was making risotto. Again, not, uh, I'm not a trained chef, so I'm not doing any move like this. I'm not doing any move like this, okay? Even though my mom was a bit of a trained chef, but I'm not. Um, so all I'm gonna do is just make my pile of mushrooms like so. And that is it. And there's one more little veggie. So I'm gonna go grab it. Be right back with the magic of video. Okay, an onion. Uh, what I usually do with my onion is just cut the heads off. The poles, I mean, kind of poles, right? Kind of like the north and south pole of an onion. Uh, peel this shit off. Peel the skin off. Um, I can't imagine anybody who wouldn't. It's kind of, kind of gross. I'm kind of used to doing this always by hand, so just pretty much get that sucker right off, and that is going in the can. Uh, now, if you want to have a little old school Amish recipe. Take an onion, cut it in half, put the onion somewhere in your house, like in the corner of a house, and it will suck up all the bacteria, the airborne bacteria. Um, kind of like a bit of a medieval, um, what do you call this? The uh, humidifier, in a way. But anyway, uh, with my onions, keep it simple. I'm just, I just cut them in half, and then. In this house, we tend to like them a little bit long, uh, so I just go ahead and just go ahead and cut them, you know, straight up. Nothing major, nothing fancy. You're gonna cut them whichever way you want. 
Um, you might have a household that wants them like onion rings, make them all the way around. It's fine. You might want to dice them up, or you're going to use a little bit of chef skills, that's fine too. Uh, and using a Cuisinart is not cheating, okay? It's only cheating on that fake ass shit they show on television called Food Net, uh, whatever it's called. Um, so, we're done with this. Now it's time for us to go grab our pan and get ready to cook. And one day I'll get this trick right, right? With the magic of video, where is it? Okay, time to cook. I prefer cooking spray. Um, if you don't have cooking spray, use a cooking spray, whatever one you like. I prefer butter. Um, or you could use olive oil, uh, personally. Plain old olive oil if you're out of cooking spray. Uh, I do not like using rapeseed oil. Um, for those of us in the States, we know it as canola oil. Um, it's gross, if you ask me. Uh, or just regular oil. Um, or you could do as the Amish and use lard. Okay, lard is king. You ask me. Lard is awesome. Uh, so go ahead and spray your pan. I crank my heat all the way. And the reason I do so is because I want it to get hot fast. Okay? And you will know right away when your stuff is ready to go. Grab yourself a spatula and wait. Uh, so right now, you know, with a little little time lapse. All right, so you're probably noticing now after about about three minutes is what it's been cooking. Three four minutes, you're probably starting to get a little bit of water in the pan. That's from the obvious from the ice that's turning into water and melting. You're probably screwing up the flavor of your food. So at this time, let's go drain it. Okay, now we're back. Uh, so you can see now the, the pan looks a lot less wet, right? So we go ahead, now you stir. Now why do I say every couple of minutes? Okay, remember the first 30 seconds, then the next 30 seconds is to keep the meat from getting stuck to the pan. Then two minutes roughly is just to kind of get it an all around, you know, cook feel. It's kind of cooking. Uh, this is five minutes approximately. All right, that's just my own formula. I did not learn this from my father-in-law, God rest his soul, who was a chef. Um, this is just my own formula that I've noticed over time. Uh, just experimenting with, you know, different meats and such. That uh, 30 seconds on each side is about what you get before it starts to stick to the pan. Okay, and about two minutes roughly on each side if you're if you're trying to achieve like a a uh, uh, rare, like a rare cook, medium rare, etc. Okay, so right now we're good. We're gonna keep. There's another ingredient. Of course, we're gonna keep this sucker in the bullpen. Put him over there. And right now, only only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sit our spatula down. We are gonna take our cover. We're gonna cover that sucker for about 10 minutes. Hit the magic of video, you know the drill. And then we'll be back. All right. I actually left this going for about 20 minutes. Uh, the chicken should be completely cooked by now. As you can see, you got a nice, uh, you're starting to get some golden brown parts, okay? This is a good time to go ahead and reduce your temp temperature to medium. One more shot of your Maggie seasoning. All right, just put that away. Now, depending on 
your people who you have coming over, who you're cooking it for, if you're cooking it for yourself, if you love it like I do. Last of the ingredients, okay? Grab yourself a teaspoon. A little minced garlic. There it is. A little minced garlic. Not too much. You don't have to put a whole lot. You only got to put about that much. A little bit on the tip of the, of the spoon in certain select areas of the pan. And go ahead and put that away so we can preserve our delicious and awesome garlic. Go ahead and stir this in. Okay. All right, now you're cooking at medium heat. Uh, as you can see, see how you can look there. See how the onions have shrunk up quite a bit. That, that's the way I like them. Uh, if you don't like them that way, if you like nice thick fat onions and leave them for the end. Uh, personally, I like them like that. I like them to break down into the food to add a little bit extra. Uh, now, there is an extra little touch if you so choose to, uh, which I just so happen I'm going to do here. Okay, I'm going to do it very lightly, but... A little Parmesan cheese, just a little bit. You don't need to do a whole lot, uh, unless you want it super cheesy. In this case, there's not a whole lot in this bag, and I really just wanted to kind of sprinkle it in there, and that would really, uh, really set it off. Give it just a little bit of cheese. Again, not too much. There's not a whole lot in this bag anyway. Uh, you could choose to stir it, or you could choose to float it on top. I also knock the whole bag in there. Like I said, there's not a whole lot. Put your pan to low at this point, okay, because you are approaching the end. Okay, and if you want to stir it in there, you may. You will notice that some of the cheese may start sticking to you. Uh, I should say your spatula. <laughs> Um, that's okay if you want. If you want to scrape it off and leave it in there, just pull a knife or you know, fork, whatever. Whatever you want to use. Put it right back in the pan. Okay. That's pretty much it. At this point, you've lowered your heat to low. Uh, you can leave that spatula. I like to leave it there so that you know, a little bit of that air can get out. Uh, set it right there. Uh, for those in case you can't see, I'll just leave it there so you, you have a little bit of uh, air to escape. Put your stove to low. Wait about this temperature, five to ten minutes depending on how golden brown you want your chicken. Now, other than that, bon appetit. Bon Appetit! And that's it for chicken and mushrooms, folks. Um, it's not that hard. Again, the hardest part is always the waiting. So it's the part where you gotta wait. Um, give yourself, you know, at least 30 minutes of cooking time. Uh, everybody will learn their own rations. It's just the way I do it. Uh, hopefully, you know, I've given you a little something new to try or something simple, something easy. Uh, so no excuse. Uh, and that's it. That's all there is to it. So I thank you for stopping in again to Reverend C's Kitchen. Reminding everyone again to click like, subscribe, uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to try. Maybe you tried it, tasted like crap for you or how to tweak it or what you tweaked or what you, you know, added to it to make it better. I'm always all ears on uh, that one. Uh, one thing I did leave out because I was totally out of, Bacos. 
throw a little Bakos in there also. It uh, adds a little bit of thumbs up to it. Uh, double thumbs up, I should say. Uh, but that's it. That's all for this episode. Uh, again, thank you for stopping in. As always, I say, stay safe. Be ye kind one to another. Peace out, and I will catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.